Hello and welcome to Arcade 85. Whoa, what? Weird, huh? Wow, something's different. That's right, I'm on chemotherapy. If you saw the last video, you're up to speed. Uh, if not, you can click on the link below and I'll link that one. So welcome to Arcade 85. Hopefully you can see that I'm in good physical health on chemotherapy and that I'm in good spirits. Speaking of which, let's have some fun with this. Because let's face it, Hollywood actors can't do this. They always have to have makeup designers try to create it. It's shaving the head's a little too much of a commitment. So they never get to have fun with those characters. I'm going to be doing a series of characters right now. And if you've got all of these figured out, I want you to put them, list them in the links below or in the uh, comments below. Because I'm not going to write it. You guys are going to have to figure out who these are. But they'll be pretty straightforward, I think. So somebody list it and everybody else can say how many of them that they got. All right. So we'll have some fun with this as he reaches for his first prop. I'm not going to tell you when I transition from one to the next, by the way. All right. Gee, Gomez, that might be right. I have grown tired of his name, Moses. Well, of course I know where the other missile is headed. Hackensack, New Jersey. It's like a snail on the edge of a straight razor. Zip it, Scott. Zip it, Scott. Zip, zip, Scott. Zip it, Scott. More props. Who loves your baby? Uno, do, uno, do, tres, cuatro. Vámono, échale, échale el ritmo. Yo soy el más rico del mundo. Vámono, vámono. This one doesn't have any audio. Good luck. One and two and three and one and two. I am the king of Siam. President Roosevelt wants me on the phone urgently. Everything's urgent to a Democrat. Draw. All right, that's it. So hopefully you have those figured out. And hopefully you're seeing that we're having fun with this. Hey. Got some great news. So we sent the pathology specimen of my lymph node that had been removed that had cancer, sent it for another opinion from the, um, um, where'd that sheet go? Oh, here it is, got my wrong sheet. From the City of Hope. And in this case, the pathologist, hematopathologist that looks at this says, you know, this has features more similar to a follicular lymphoma than to a fuse, diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, which is really good. And so the good news keeps pouring in. Now, the difference between the two types of cancer is subtle and can be distinguished by a pattern. And in this case, the hematopathologist is optimistic that this pattern means that I have a type of cancer uh, that's a, a, little, a little easier to treat which is a blessing. Again, everything that's been coming in, all the blessings that have been streaming in live have been spectacular. And I'm very appreciative for everyone that's been praying on my behalf. Um, let's talk about our chop. If you remember our chop from our last session, this might look familiar to you. And in this case, we've got the sidebar. These are the things that I got three weeks ago. My next our chop regimen is tomorrow. So I get these at three week intervals and I'm scheduled for three cycles. So I got a cycle three weeks ago and then tomorrow I'll be getting my next cycle of our chop. And again, you can review that in the last video. Meanwhile, when you check in to receive your infusion, that's when they put medicine into your porticath. They have you sign a piece of paper here that says that you agree to these medicines. And you say, oh, wait a minute, our chop is five medicines, 
but now you're throwing on five more. So a couple of them are easy, Tylenol and IV Benadryl, but a couple of them are kind of crazy. And so uh, basically um, they tell you, oh, so you don't generally take any medicine? Okay, great. We're going to give you 10 medicines in a single day to make up for it. So it gets wild. When you get that medicine, boy, you know that you have gotten medicine. Towel off here for a sec. The craziest one um, is, uh, is called Nulasta, and it's a um, granulocyte colony stimulating hormone. Basically, the chemotherapy that they give you wipes out all of your white blood cells, and there's a certain white blood cell that isn't cancerous in my case, and it's called a neutrophil. And in order to minimize the time that you're neutropenic, they give you this medicine called Nulasta. And interestingly, they can't give it to you on the same day as the infusion. And I haven't looked this up exactly why, but I trust that they're doing the right thing. And so they give it to you in a little omnipod, a little pod that's placed on your trunk. And the medicine will be delivered 24 hours later. And so it basically prevents you from having to go back to the cancer center to get another injection because this thing will infuse on a timer. So it's pretty fascinating. Meanwhile, when you go home, you realize, and you're trying to sleep off some of the chemotherapy, you realize that the little lights that are telling you which, at which time you're supposed to be watching and observing and at which time you can remove it, the little green light is really bright. And so if you find yourself putting a little bit of uh, black duct tape covering that little green light, hoping that that's not going to mess with the process. Then eventually a series of clicks and buzzes 24 hours later, and you're trying to figure out, now when was I supposed to remove this thing? Because it's just taped on to your abdomen, and uh, it has a little infusion apparatus that pokes into your subcutaneous tissue and releases the medicine, and you have to follow a series of lights. Bottom line is leave the thing on until you're sure that it needs to be removed. Because as I was researching, I was going, so what light? And it's a series of different lights, and it's a little bit, little bit bizarre. They could, they could do it a lot smarter, I think. But the funny thing is, I got a bill for it. I took it off you know, well after it was, it was done. But I got a bill later, and the thing was $4,000. That was $4,000 of medicine. And so my heart breaks for the person that accidentally takes that one off too soon. Wow, that's an expensive process to take off too soon. And so you leave that one on. Um, so chemotherapy, you feel like someone's poisoning you. You feel awful. It starts with just a lousy, toxic feeling that, um, for me, affected mostly the neck and above the exception being the bladder. I'd never had bladder pain before in my life. I'd never had a bladder infection to my knowledge. And boy, you feel so toxic that your kidneys are trying to remove all of the chemotherapy and all of the, the antibodies that they've been giving you. And when this happens, the, the, uh, the urine becomes really toxic. And so you're drink, drink, drinking, and you're trying to get that out. But boy, your bladder is saying, get this out of here. The main symptoms other than that, as I say, head and neck. And so, uh, and so my jawbone hurt, my ears rang and they hurt, my salivary glands were swollen. Remember how when you don't eat something sugary for a while and then you eat something sugary and you can feel those uh, mandibular salivary glands kicking in? Well, imagine that every time you try to consume anything that your poor salivary glands are just reacting. They're just, it's just awful. And, uh, and when you wake up from a nap or when you wake up in the morning, it feels like someone had been hanging you upside down. It feels that kind of nasty head rush, that throbbing head thing. Eventually, I figured out that I'd be best to incline my bed, which for our chop, for me, that's what I'm going to be doing these next few, uh, these next cycles is I'm going to be uh, sleeping on an incline because, boy, you just feel a head rush when you don't. Meanwhile, I was very happy to see that after the first few days, that toxicity starts to wear off and you start to feel pretty good. The following week, 
your toxicity from the original medicine is, is shaken off pretty good. Now, you're neutropenic. You have a low white blood cell count, and so you're at high risk for infection that second week. Having said that, if there is no infection, and I learned this one you know, firsthand, I'd, wow, if there's no infection, even when your immune system is down, you feel pretty good. And then you realize, oh, that's right. I saw John Travolta in The Boy in the Plastic Bubble. He was doing pretty good with no immune system to speak of, uh, or you know, a very limited immune system, and yet no infections, and you feel pretty good. And so last week, I was feeling reasonably good, even though uh, my immune system was down. This week, uh, in classic form, I feel pretty good going into the next chemotherapy round, and then it starts all over again. Meanwhile, um, I've discussed this with friends and family. Um, I'm pleased with the notion that the chemotherapy will continue to be the same. In other words, I've already received our chop for a course, and now going into the second course, I know how I'll adapt and what I'll do to, to, to put up with it. And so, uh, and so if they were to throw something new at me each time, that'd be a lot more difficult. Instead, to have the same thing happen repeatedly, then hopefully I'll be able to adapt. As you may recall from our last video, this is a stage one cancer. It was only in one lymph node, thank goodness. And so I'll only be having three courses of RCHOP where many of you that are viewing this video are gonna be scheduled for six courses because that's standard. I'm getting away with three because of the limited nature of the cancer. And so my heart goes out to you for anyone who's done six cycles of this medicine. But that's what it's for. It's there to save your life. And so embrace it. Uh, this, this, uh, at this point, I wanna thank a good friend of mine. His name is Troy. And Troy just last year went through RCHOP. He went through six cycles of RCHOP. And he and his wife, Amy, have been very helpful to me and my wife, Laurie, in helping to coach us, helping to be our mentors so that we can know what's around the corner and what to expect. Because this is some tough stuff. And Troy went through six cycles of this medicine that I'm only slated for three. And so again, that's, that's pretty typical is the six. Troy and Amy, thank you so much. Um, I guess we can wrap up this video uh, with me thanking you for everything that you've done. I'm so grateful for everyone that has been saying prayers on my behalf. I asked for prayers last time and I had so many people respond saying I'm praying for you. I have people respond who don't even pray typically, but they've been praying on my behalf. And I'm very grateful for that. I'm grateful to the Lord Jesus Christ my Savior, our Savior. I'm grateful for our Heavenly Father and for all of the blessings that I've received. I'm grateful for my family, friends, patients. I've been getting so many cards and letters and phone messages and texts from everybody. Everyone has been so supportive and so wonderful in this process, and I thank you sincerely. Thank you for watching this video. Enjoy the... Uh, the little skit that I did, and see if you can figure out those characters. Enjoy your arcade games, and take care.